Hi friends, today we embark on another captivating journey into the shadowy world of true crime stories. Get ready to investigate, discover and reveal the secrets of a dark and dramatic case. Are you prepared to dive into this thrilling investigation? Let's begin now. The 911 emergency call rang out. The panicked voice of a 13-year-old girl named Megan. My mother, she was stabbed. Her family's peaceful life suddenly fell apart. Who held the knife? Why does this happen? Megan, a normal girl, living in a peaceful family with her mother, stepfather and two sisters, is now facing a nightmare. Her voice was filled with confusion and despair as her life was torn apart by tragedy. In a close-knit family, everything seems perfect. But behind that peaceful appearance, hide dark secrets. This case is not simply a matter of a jealous daughter or a small family conflict. It's also a story about troubled childhoods, complicated relationships, and the harsh truth about who is really responsible for a mother's death. Let's explore this tragic story. The family lives in Willoughby Hills, a beautiful small town outside of Cleveland, Ohio. Their life seemed perfect. Kevin Nofel, a truck driver, and Lisa Nofel, a social worker, raised their three daughters in a cozy three-bedroom house. The children are loved and well cared for, and there is a playground full of toys for them to enjoy. But on the evening of the 12th, when Kevin Nofel went to work and Lisa Nofel stayed home with her children, things began to change. At around 10 p.m., Lisa Nofel usually puts her three-year-old daughter, Haley, to bed. Megan, 13, returned to her own room, while Sabrina, 18, stayed up to finish her schoolwork. In the middle of the night, she felt a headache, so she decided to go downstairs to find painkillers. Sabrina left the room and went downstairs to Kevin Nofel and Lisa Nofel's bedroom. She opened the medicine cabinet and took a few pills. No one knows exactly what happened next. Just know that at about 1.15 a.m., 13-year-old Megan was awakened by strange sounds and rushed into her mother's room to seek help. My mother, she was stabbed. Her voice trembled as she called 911. Lisa Knofel had been stabbed 178 times in the head, body, neck, and limbs. Self-defense wounds showed that she had tried to resist. Some injuries were so severe that they severed arteries. This family's lives have been torn apart, and the biggest question remains, who is really behind this tragedy? The knife used to commit the crime was a 15-inch long, serrated knife, bent due to too much force. Lisa Nofel, Megan's mother, could no longer be saved. Her veins had collapsed due to excessive blood loss. Meanwhile, Haley, the three-year-old daughter, was hiding in the closet, and Sabrina, covered in blood, was the one holding the knife at 1.17 a.m. A police patrol received an emergency call about an attack taking place in this peaceful area. He rushed to the house in Willoughby Hills, where he found 13-year-old Megan still holding the phone, calling 911, begging the boy to stop the attack. When he entered, Sabrina came out with her hands up, covered in blood, and still sobbing, holding the murder weapon in her hand. She had a few small wounds on her arms, nape and legs. When police spoke to Sabrina, she was incoherent and uncooperative, but the evidence clearly showed what happened. Megan witnesses 
Sabrina attacked their mother, and the big question arises, how could a beloved family member commit such a horrific act? Why did she use a knife to attack her adoptive mother, stabbing her nearly 200 times in a rage? Sabrina Zunik was born in October 1994 and had a difficult childhood. Her parents, Mark Zunik and Susan Edwards, both have extensive criminal records. Susan spent six months in jail for grand theft, and later she was discovered supplying drugs to a group of teenagers. Mark was equally serious with multiple arrests for disorderly conduct and drunk driving. When Sabrina was just 16 months old, Mark was arrested for domestic violence, marking the beginning of a series of violent events in her childhood. Even though Susan and Mark are still together, Sabrina's life is still full of chaos. According to neighbors, the police were often called to their house and Mark was often drunk when Sabrina was young. In 2006, when Sabrina was 11 years old, things got worse. Mark continued to abuse alcohol and was violent towards Susan. Their lives became unstable and eventually Sabrina was sent to a county-run care center when she was 14 years old. Here, she clearly documented her anger issues and violent behavior. Sabrina has been diagnosed with ADHD and many other problems, which helps explain the difficulties she faces. She has gone through many events in her life, from abuse to battles with herself. These experiences led to negative behaviors. And when she changed high schools, she continued to face great challenges. At the Foster family's group home, Sabrina's behavior changed dramatically. At her new school, she always kept her head down, completed her homework, and fully participated in all classes. At 16, things seemed to be improving. Her new adoptive family, the Knofel family, is experienced in caring for troubled children. Lisa Knofel Knofel, a social worker specializing in child protection, understands the value of compassion and tries to treat Sabrina with empathy. Lisa Knofel started this job in 1999, around the same time her daughter was born. After her marriage broke up in 2003 and 2006, she met and married Kevin Knofel, who also had a previous marriage they moved into their beautiful home on Chagrin Drive in 2008, and a year later, they welcomed their stepdaughter, Haley. The Knofel family, consisting of Kevin Knofel, Lisa Knofel, Megan, Haley, and Sabrina, appears to be a happy family on the outside. However, despite Sabrina's apparent progress, her relationship with Lisa Knofel quickly becomes strained. Sabrina shared with a friend that Lisa Nofel had turned her life into hell with vicious arguments. She felt that Lisa Nofel favored her two biological daughters and that it was unfair, leading to a split in the family between Lisa Nofel, Megan and Haley, and Sabrina and Kevin Nofel. Kevin Nofel became the one to comfort Sabrina whenever she argued with Lisa Nofel and they became unusually close. Sabrina's friends notice this strange relationship and feel uncomfortable with the sensitive jokes between them. Although no one spoke up to warn them, Sabrina believed that they loved each other but had to keep this relationship a secret from other family members. Sabrina feels that Kevin Knofel was the person who helped her the most during difficult times. They agree that if she needs anything, she will go to Kevin Nofel in Lisa Nofel, Megan and Haley's absence. Sabrina even saved Kevin Nofel's name as Kevin Nofel Love in her iPad contacts, expressing her special feelings for him. However, in 2012, the relationship between Sabrina and Lisa Nofel took a turn for the worse. Sabrina feels motherly towards Haley and resents the way Lisa Nofel keeps them apart. On one occasion, Lisa Nofel 
restrained Sabrina, making her decide to go to the police, but to no avail. Despite an increasingly tense family environment, Sabrina's request to stay with the Nofel family after her 18th birthday in October 2012 was granted. Her social worker found no problems in the family. Sabrina did well in school, attended counselling, and there was no indication that the stress would lead to tragedy before November 12, 2012. Kevin Nofel's relationship with Lisa Nofel also deteriorated. On September 15th, police were called to their home due to an argument involving Megan. Lisa Knofel accused Kevin Nofel of suffocating Megan, while Kevin Nofel claimed he only grabbed her by the back of the neck to push her into the room. The argument ended and Lisa Nofel left, but Kevin Nofel spoke to the police out of concern that the incident could be used in future divorce proceedings. He shares with Sabrina that he wants to divorce Lisa Nofel to be with her. Kevin Nofel also asked Sabrina's social worker about the possibility of retaining custody of her after the divorce. During a camping trip with his old friend, David Strunk, Kevin Nofel admitted that Lisa Nofel suspected him of having an affair with their adopted daughter, and he showed David pictures of Sabrina, including the photo shoot. Model, he helped her shoot. Kevin Nofel bought Sabrina underwear and announced that he was meeting with a divorce lawyer in October 2012, just one month before his wife was murdered. On the night of November 12th, when the police announced the incident, he immediately demanded to know the situation of the girls and wanted to pick them up from the police station. At 5 a.m., Haley and Megan were brought in, but Sabrina was being held captive. Police officers contacted Kevin Nofel that morning and found him acting strangely and surprisingly calm. One officer said Kevin Nofel had doctor, and having seen many similar situations, he did not want to hear about things he had never encountered. He is disappointed when he does not see Sabrina, saying that he is her foster father and needs to see her immediately. While the police interviewed Sabrina to find out why she murdered her adoptive mother, she claimed that Lisa Knofel never liked her and always wanted her to leave the house. When asked about Lisa Knofel's death, Sabrina said she knew nothing and remembered nothing after going into Lisa Knofel's bedroom to get medicine. When the police mentioned that she had a knife, Sabrina still insisted she didn't remember anything. But the evidence strongly suggests she is under arrest, and it appears she is responsible for Lisa Nofel's death. At this point, Sabrina is arrested and sent to prison, while Kevin Nofel seems to quickly move on with his life. Soon after, he donated Lisa Nofel's furniture to charity and tried to sell her bedroom furniture on an e-commerce marketplace. He asked David to close Lisa Nofel's social media accounts, claiming that the flow of messages could not be handled. On November 17th, just five days after his wife's death, Kevin Nofel hired a murder scene cleanup company, claiming that money was not an issue because he had a life insurance policy, longevity, worth 250,000 USD. However, there is more than one such contract. Kevin Nofel collected approximately $785,000 from various insurance policies, including from private insurance companies. He used this money to shop, build a swimming pool, buy a new car, and even learn to fly. While Kevin Knofel lives a comfortable life Sabrina languishes in prison, awaiting trial for murder. Nine months later, things began to change for Kevin Nofel. Sabrina, tired of being imprisoned, decides to tell the police about her relationship with Kevin Nofel and what really happened. She revealed that Kevin Nofel told her that Lisa Nofel needed to die. When asked why, 
Sabrina replied that she did what Kevin Nofel told her to do. Kevin Nofel admitted that he was afraid he would lose custody of his daughters, including his own daughter, if he divorced Lisa Nofel. Kevin Nofel also told Sabrina about the insurance policy amounting to nearly $800,000 and affirmed that Lisa Nofel's departure would benefit both of them. They began planning, even discussing with an old friend of Sabrina's, the possibility of attacking Lisa Knofel. However, this plan did not come to fruition when that friend moved to California. In early November, they continued to discuss using guns to carry out their plan. Sabrina will shoot Lisa Nofel, while Kevin Nofel will throw away the gun. The plan was, Kevin Nofel said he would take Sabrina to the shooting range. Lisa Nofel once asked why Kevin Nofel never did anything to her again. But on the morning of the murder, Kevin Nofel still drove Sabrina to school as usual. This time, however, he stopped the car and began arguing with Lisa Nofel. An argument so bad that he said he couldn't take it anymore and would kill himself if she didn't die. Sabrina loved Kevin Nofel, so she decided to kill Lisa Nofel as soon as she had the chance. They plan the stabbing. If Lisa Nofel lies on her side, Sabrina will stab her in the back. If she were on her back, she would stab her in the neck. The attack would take place at night while Lisa Knofel was sleeping, but would not disturb Haley. Sabrina, who often enters Lisa Knofel's room in the middle of the night, has prepared a dangerous plan. She planned to declare herself insane if caught, which is why she pretended not to remember anything throughout her interview with the police. Sabrina believes this will help her protect herself, just as Kevin Nofel told her. If you go to prison, you only have to serve 25 years. I will find you a lawyer and make sure you're well taken care of. Nine months later, Kevin Knofel still hasn't kept that promise. Realizing she had been manipulated, Sabrina decided to go to prosecutors and ask for a plea deal. She willingly cooperated with the investigation and told them everything Kevin Knofel had done. The perfect world that Kevin Nofel built gradually fell apart. Police contacted Autumn Pavic, Sabrina's old friend, to lure Kevin Nofel into admitting the murder plan. Their conversation was recorded, but Kevin Nofel still did not admit anything. Although multiple search warrants for Kevin Knofel's vehicles and electronic devices in his home turned up nothing, Sabrina's testimony was enough for him to be arrested and charged with complicity in murder and aggravated assault. Important. Had sex in August 2013. Sabrina pleaded guilty to murder and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 30 years, which would be in 2042, when she would be 47 years old. In contrast, Kevin Nofel pleaded not guilty, defending himself by saying there was no evidence that he had an affair with Sabrina or plotted to kill his wife. Kevin Knofel suggested that Sabrina was a troubled young man with a history of substance abuse and untrustworthy behavior. What's scarier is that he took advantage of her youth, instability, and vulnerability. On June 11, 2014, Kevin Knofel Connell was found guilty on all counts and sentenced to two years in prison for each of the six sexual assault counts, along with a life sentence with parole eligibility after 30 years for complicity in murder. This story makes us ponder the dark aspects of human life. Who is really at fault in this tragedy? Was it Sabrina, who was manipulated and led down an evil path, or Kevin Nofel? who took advantage of her weakness? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Until next time, stay safe and subscribe to our channel.
We'll see you on the decoder soon. Thank you for following today's story. If you find these cases interesting and want to not miss any future stories, please click like and subscribe to the channel to receive notifications about the next cases. Join us to discover more mysteries and scary truths in the world of true crime.